Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. I'm running a bit late today because I woke up a bit late because I stayed up a bit late porting that game VVV VVV to Serenity, and it was really fun. But got a little carried away, lost track of time. You know, you know how it goes. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, today I guess I would talk a little bit about Pledge because. Uh, this weekend, I implemented the OpenBSD style pledge syscall in Serenity, and it's something that I've mentioned a couple of times before that I would like to do. And now there's an initial implementation in the system, so I thought I could talk a bit about um, what I've learned from it so far. So, <clears throat> um, it was the first thing I would say is it was it was pleasantly easy to implement it. Uh, of course, I based the whole thing off of the OpenBSD man page, so I didn't look at the implementation they had, because, you know, I didn't want to be influenced by it, and um, I always like to, to build things off of um, descriptions of the public interface rather than off of um, someone else's implementation. <laughs> it's just, um, you know, you end up with more... Um, I think you end up learning more that way. Uh, but anyway... Uh, it was pleasantly easy to get it working, and the categories that they came up with were these um, these promises, promise categories that they came up with for OpenBSD, like STDIO, um, RPath, WPath, CPath, and so on, INET, UNIX. Um, I think they're good. They fit really, really well to the uh, Serenity OS capabilities. Um, I had to add a few custom uh, promises but I think it was only two, so it was, it was all in all pretty good so far. Um, and I really liked how easy it was to, to go through the process of um, updating a program so that it makes a pledge. And uh, I've definitely had a couple of gotcha moments where I discover that, hey, wait a minute, this program does a bit more than I actually thought it did, even though I wrote the program. <laughs> So, <clears throat> I can see how that has some serious benefits. And also when I was starting out, I was kind of a little bit skeptical about the API just taking strings. But as I kept using it, I started to appreciate the string API. Um, because now, when you make your pledge, then you're always writing out exactly uh, what's being pledged at that point. Because I was thinking, could we do bit masks? Could we do like um, pledge, um, like pledging an individual bit at a time, something like that? But um, but it's the, the overview that you can get right now just by eyeballing it is so good because you, like every step of the way that you reduce your pledge, you see exactly what remains in the set of promises. So I really like that, and it really grew on me. Um, and I guess I'm, it's, it's teaching me a lot of things about the operating system. So one thing is that uh, because we use, um, we do DNS lookups via this lookup server process, um, then anyone who wants to do a DNS lookup needs to be able to open a Unix socket and so um, a lot of programs have to start out with Unix capabilities, like Unix socket capabilities. Uh, but they can drop that once they've done that initial uh, get host by adder, which is pretty cool. Um, but in OpenBSD, they have a special DNS promise that you can make. And then it gives you like a thin slice of just the things you need to perform a DNS lookup. And I think it would be nice if we could come up with something similar here. I don't know exactly how yet, but um, the Unix promise feels a bit overly broad, I guess, because if you, if you pledge Unix, then that means that uh, you can open or connect to um, any local socket. And I would like it to, I would like to be able to only connect to the DNS lookup machine. Um, if I say that I'm just going to do DNS. And likewise, um, 
I've been applying, I've been using Pledge in a couple of GUI programs, and that got really interesting because it sort of showed me what's actually needed to run a GUI program on Serenity at the moment. So you need like, uh, you need Unix, you need shared buffers, and then you need um, like file system read access, write access, uh, create access, and file attribute change access. But you can actually drop a bunch of those after you've connected to the Windows Server. Because once you've connected to the Windows Server, you can drop the Unix pledge uh, as it is only required to connect to the server, but it's not required to do I.O. once you're connected. And that's actually, I found that super neat. Because once you have a file descriptor open, you can do uh, read and write on it. Uh, you just can't uh, set sock opt, get sock opt, you know, get peer name, stuff like that. You can't, you can't do any of those fancy socket things, but you can do read and write, and that's all that we need for Windows Server. So in the, uh, in the GUI programs, we now pledge um, Unix on startup, connect to Windows Server, and then we drop the Unix pledge. So we can't make any more socket connections. And I just think that's super duper cool. And, and I would like to figure out more things like that. Um, of course, uh, just like I was saying about DNS, I'm also kind of interested in creating a custom pledge called something like GUI, maybe, that um, somehow is only able to connect to Windows Server <clears throat> and create shareable bitmaps and stuff like that. Like just the thin, uh, just the, 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 not necessarily thin, but just a slice of things needed to make a GUI client. Um, I think that's, that's something that's, that um, I would like to explore. And I, I'm starting to see that um, you need some sort of cooperation with the file system in order to achieve these things that I'm describing now. Because the way we connect to Lookup Server and Windows Server is through a um, local socket file in temp portals or temp portal. Um, and we need to somehow teach the kernel that a specific file should be accessible to someone who has made a specific pledge, I guess. And um, I was talking to some OpenBSD developers, uh, and they mentioned that, um, or they showed me the code, and, and, and like you could see that it's sort of hard coded. A lot of things, a lot of like file system paths are hard coded in uh, the pledge implementation in OpenBSD, and I don't love that. Uh, that feels like uh, it feels kind of hackish to me to do it that way, and I would like to expose something instead in the file system that allows an individual file to somehow um, be annotated with, um, you know, I'm available to to someone who pledges XYZ. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that, but I, I think it's something we can we can figure out. Um, and I mean, obviously, you can you can put any any bits you want in the file system, right? But I would like to do it in a way that actually stays uh, compatible with the regular Unix file system layout. So maybe I need to maybe I need to finally look into um, access control lists or, or these things extended attributes I don't know I've, I've been avoiding learning about those things for the, the last 20 years or so of using uh, Unix maybe I should look at what they actually do I don't know we'll see um, and another thing that turned out pretty interesting I think is I ended up making a specific uh, thread promise that you can pledge, and if you don't pledge thread, you don't get access to creating new threads, and you don't get access to uh, synchronization primitives like Futex. And I think that, I mean, when I was choosing, I was going through all the syscalls and like choosing which one goes in what, and I sort of paused at thread because I wasn't sure what to do, and. The OpenBSD man page didn't really talk about threads, but I figured I would put them in a separate promise. And it turns out that um, 
according to uh, Brian, uh, they, in OpenBSD they put threads together with the standard I.O. promise. So it's like the, the promise that basically everyone makes uh, to get like baseline, uh, command line program functionality. They just put threads in there. And to me that seemed like um, maybe we could do better by, by putting that into a separate promise. And my thinking is that if you don't pledge thread and you don't pledge a proc, which gives you fork, then a compromised program has no way to achieve concurrency um, on its own without um, like exploiting some other program or something. Uh, and that's at least that seems to me like it would make it much harder to exploit um, race condition problems because even if you can take control of a program, you can only do one thing at a time in that program. You, have, you don't have fork and you don't have create thread. So that seemed like a, a pretty good idea to me. But maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Um, but for now, it's a separate pledge. And it seems, seems to work out all right. And it made me, made me discover which parts of the system actually use threads, because I totally forgot that Windows Server uses a thread. And then um, last night I was gonna make a video about the uh, VVVVVV game that I ported, and I wanted to set a wallpaper, uh, and Windows Server crashed because uh, it said in the debug output, Windows Server has not pledged thread. And that's true. And it's because when you set a wallpaper, then Windows Server spawns a second thread to do, uh, decode the wallpaper image so that it doesn't block um, event processing on the main thread. And yeah, so that, that was nice. And um, it's this sort of thing that's bound to happen with an interface like Pledge, right? Because you might do something later on in your program that requires additional capabilities that you did not realize up front. But I think it's a good thing, and it's good to discover these things. And now it sort of makes me think, is this necessary? Can we avoid this? Can we do this somehow differently? And um, I think probably that's a good idea, probably. Um, because it, it, it definitely does not seem like the best idea to uh, decode random image files in the Windows server if you're trying to lock down your system. Instead, you, you could imagine having a uh, separate server process that uh, runs in a very, very limited um, capability state that decodes the image for you and then gives you back the pixels. And then you wouldn't have to pledge thread in Windows Server, and you also wouldn't have to open um, random PNGs that you downloaded from the internet. Um, so many wins there to be had. Uh, I really like this about Pledge that it gets you, at least it gets me into this way of thinking that um, that I want to see if I can reduce the set of promises. It's almost like, um, like how it's fun to make something go faster or use less memory. If you can make something use less capabilities, that's there's just something sort of fun and game-like about it almost. Like, can you find all of the things that you can um, reduce? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've, I've converted, I don't know, 10-ish, 10, 15, I don't know how many, not many, but a bunch programs on the system so far. And I also did the Quake port, which was pleasantly easy. Um, and so far, so good. It's working out pretty good. Um, there, there are some things about the implementation of Pledge that I'm not happy with at the moment. Like, I don't really like that we have to go in every individual syscall and sort of audit the Pledge state of the current process. I think it might be better to um, create like a separate layer that um, maybe like the syscall, the syscall trap code would instead um, take the 
syscall number and, and, and like all the parameters and everything and, and like send them through the pledge layer first and verify that everything looks good. Um, because then we wouldn't have this logic spread out quite as much. Because now it's it's really spread out throughout the syscalls, and and it's I can see it becoming a bit hard to reason about if we keep adding more syscalls or adding more intricate um, capability descriptions or constraints or whatever. Anyway, um, and yeah, and as I was saying. Um, we're gonna need some file system. We're gonna need some file system integration somehow with this, and I would also like to do the unveil syscall from uh, OpenBSD as well eventually, which is sort of like an like pledge for the file system that you you call unveil, and um, you give the kernel a, a list of paths basically, and from then on you can only access those paths. And then if you call unveil with no arguments, then you can't call unveil again. So you've limited, you can limit a process to a specific set of paths, and then it's unable to open any other path. And obviously, that seems really useful as well. So that's something that would be a nice complement to Pledge to further reduce the capabilities of programs that need to open files, but don't need to open every file. So yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, I will say that something I really like about this is how non-invasive it is, because if you're just using the system normally and programming correctly, then this is not going to cause you any trouble. Uh, if it causes you trouble, you just um, expand your pledge, and if you don't want to expand your pledge, then well, then you got to figure out why you don't want to. And maybe think about, is this really a good design then? If I need to add some capability that I would prefer not to add. So it just seems to me like a, like a huge improvement. Um, and it pushes you towards building better software. So that's, it's just really, really cool so far. I really like it. Um, but we'll see going forward how it works out having a lot of interesting discussions about it on IRC lately with people talking about uh, how we can um, how we can use this type of mechanism to uh, reduce the amount of stuff that individual programs can do even further uh, and as long as it doesn't disrupt the system in any way then why not do it seems really nice nice. I'm happy with Pledge so far, as you can probably tell. Um, but we need to iterate a bit more on it, because obviously it comes from OpenBSD, and OpenBSD is not a desktop operating system, um, you know, in, in the core, which Serenity is. So um, we we're coming at this from a slightly different angle and we have some some other things that we want to work on uh, and figure out how to do nicely like we should probably have this gooey pledge that I was talking about anyways exciting times it's fun to see what happens and I saw when I got up this morning that the, there's a bunch of pull requests adding pledge to various programs in the Serenity user land and that's just super awesome. And I'm, I'm gonna have to look at those on my lunch break. Uh, so that's cool. Very cool. Uh, okay, I gotta stop talking about Pledge now, but <laughs> but it was, I just wanted to give an update, I guess. So thanks everyone for listening to that. I think I said Pledge 100,000 times. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me on the commute. Uh, of course, I hope that you are doing all right and that your projects are going okay. And I will see you next time. Bye.